It's a silent threat lurking where you'd least expect it, in our drinking water. We assume, of course, it's safe, but scientists are warning about a common and potentially dangerous chemical that can survive in the ground and in our water forever. On a cold winter day on the Stone Ridge Dairy Farm in Arundel, Maine, Fred Stone was more worried about his cows being cold than himself especially his prized brown Swiss, named Blue. She likes to give me a hard time as much as she can. <laughs> Fred and his wife, Laura, are only the latest generation to work this dairy. It's been in the family for over a century. But since November of 2016, every drop of milk, that white gold that's been a reliable livelihood for generations, is now being poured right down the drain. That's a hell of a waste. Even I can't drink it. He had no idea the wastewater that the state licensed him to use to fertilize his fields was also swimming with potentially toxic chemicals called PFAS. Now, his land, his cows, and yes, their milk are all contaminated. Had you ever heard of PFAS or any of Never. these chemicals? Never. A lot of people haven't. PFAS is an acronym for a family of man-made compounds called per- and polyfluoral alkali substances. The CDC has listed a host of health effects believed to be associated with exposure to those chemicals, including cancer, liver damage, increased cholesterol, and a lot more. The chemicals are so highly mobile, they're not only being found in soil and groundwater, but in the atmosphere, too. In fact, they've even been detected in raindrops falling in some of the most remote areas of the world. This story is about a new plastic material trademark Teflon. PFAS chemicals have been around for decades. Oh, good thing it's Teflon. DuPont was the first to use PFAS in Teflon, giving us those non-stick pots and pans. Half of this piece of carpet has been treated with this new finish. The other half has not. 3M used a different PFAS in its once popular fabric protector, Scotchgard. Today, those chemical cousins can still be found in almost anything designed to fend off oil or water or grease. That includes things like pizza boxes, paper plates, rain jackets, ski wax, even guitar strings. PFAS are basically impossible to escape, and scientists say they are likely here to stay. They are nearly indestructible. You just can't get rid of them. You can't get rid of them. Patrick McRoy, the former deputy director of the advocacy group Defend Our Health in Maine, explains just why that staying power is so very troubling. A lot of chemicals, when they go into your body or when they end up in the environment, they break down, they slowly decompose. PFAS don't do that. Once you put PFAS somewhere, it's going to stay there practically forever. That means the levels of these so-called forever chemicals can build up and linger in our bloodstreams forever. How high were your levels when they told you about your water? They're supposed to be under 40 parts per trillion. Yeah. Ours is 26,000. 26,000 per trillion, yep. I know, I know. <laughs> Kathy and Bruce Harrington, who live next to a farm, were notified by Maine's Department of Environmental Protection that their drinking water was tainted with PFAS. The likely source was two industrial plants not far away. Your well is right there. Yep, well is right there. They come and tested our water and they said, we'll send you a report in a couple of weeks or whatever. And they called us in a few days, and they said, do not drink your water, don't use it for cooking, nothing. Oh, for what, asks Bruce. Bottom line is we don't need freaking eggs to slide out of pans versus people dying. PFAS contamination is really a national crisis, and the real scale of contamination is, is staggering. The more we test, the more we find it. Melanie Benish, legislative attorney at the Environmental Working Group in Washington, says thousands of sites nationwide are polluted with PFAS, and she lays the blame for that growing crisis squarely at the feet of the companies who invented the chemicals in the first place. It is the manufacturers like DuPont and 3M 
who have gotten us here today. So they've known for 70 years that they were poisoning the water and they didn't tell the EPA, they didn't tell their neighbors, they didn't tell their workers, they didn't tell anyone because they were making too much money. In the last two decades, thousands of lawsuits have been brought against the manufacturers for allegedly knowing PFAS chemicals were dangerous. While most deny they did anything wrong, settlement offers have been pouring in to the tune of billions of dollars. But Benish says the manufacturers aren't the only ones to blame. There has also been regulatory failure. The FDA, new in the 1960s, the Department of Defense, new in the 1970s, the EPA has known since at least the 90s, and they didn't treat the issue with the amount of urgency that it needed. Regulating PFAS is like playing a game of whack-a-mole. DuPont and 3M phased out two of the PFAS suspected of being the most harmful, but they still manufacture others. In fact, there are thousands of variants. Many of them have real similarities that make it very likely that one is just as toxic as the other. Take this plant DuPont built in North Carolina back in the 70s, and then spun off to a different company called Comores back in 2015. It's almost like a forensic kind of activity. Almost a decade ago, Detlef Kanape, an environmental engineering professor at North Carolina State University, started testing the water near that plant that sits right along the Cape Fear River. In 2017, his research made headlines. The study said a new PFAS called Gen X was clearly present in the water. And if you look at this, there's, there's, you know, the water is completely clear and there's really nothing wrong with it, but it does have very high levels of PFAS in it, you know, several thousand nanograms per liter. It's unholy. We live in America. I should be able to enjoy a shower and not worry that it's going to give me or my kids cancer. I don't know that I shuffled these cards. Emily Donovan, a mother of two, lives about 80 miles downstream from the Kemors plant. The Cape Fear River is a source of drinking water for more than 350,000 people in and around Wilmington. She, like most people, just always assumed it was safe. The EPA doesn't require utilities to regularly test for them. So there's really no way for the average American to know if it's even in their drinking water right now, or in their food, or in their air. Based on what it called new evidence, this past June, the EPA did update its drinking water advisories about PFAS, warning that even the tiniest amounts over a lifetime may be enough to cause negative health effects in humans. But it stopped short of creating a new federal drinking water standard. There has been no new drinking water standard in the United States since the 1990s. 30 years. Do a post with some of that. And so tell us which state Emily co-founded Clean Cape Fear. It's a community action group that, among other things, has been fighting for both federal and state agencies to crack down harder on all of the PFAS pollutants. You have two choices. You can, you can have a breakdown about it, or you can channel that energy and that heartbreak into something productive and create a positive. Comores was forced by state environmental regulators to install a host of anti-pollution technologies. It's cost them millions. In a statement to CBS News, the company says it's destroying over 99.99% of PFAS in the air. And it's reduced PFAS compounds reaching the Cape Fear River by 97%. As for PFAS that have built up in the ground over the years, Kimore says it will build a barrier wall that will capture and treat the groundwater, a process it says will remove nearly all of them. The exposure has dropped dramatically for people who live downstream. It's much tougher for the people who live immediately around the plant whose wells are contaminated. This is two-week-old two lettuce so. seedling. Okay. Mm -hmm. What Professor Canape is now interested in investigating is to see just how much of any PFAS is present in the food grown nearby. We have analyzed some of the produce from backyard gardens in that area that suggests the levels can be quite high. I'm scared that it is too late. I'm scared that we're going to die because of what we've ingested. Residents like Jane Jacobs, a member of the native Tuscarora Nation, have always seen the land as sacred. 
but she fears the blight on her tribe's land might just end a way of life. My people have always hunted in these swamps, but they're fed by the rivers. So now the animals are polluted the same way the water is polluted because they drink out of the rivers and out of the swamps. What do you think, Reuben? You're not going to make any sound, are you? No one who lives off the land would willingly poison it. There you go. Fred is certainly one of those people. Uh. As are farmers in nearly every state who use treated wastewater to nourish their fields. He, just like his father and his grandfather before him, saw their soil as part of their soul. Cold and drought were supposed to be the biggest threats, not a chemical made by man. At some point in time, I'm going to have to tell my, my father and my grandfather what I did with the farm that they entrusted me with. But this wasn't your fault, though. It wasn't my fault, but it was under my watch. Now it's, it's going to be gone. So that's it. That's the end of the road.